The Department of Biotechnology has organized a two-day Global Biotechnology Summit on the 5th and 6th February 2016 at Vigyan Bhavan New Delhi, showcasing India's biotechnology strength and capacity. This event is an opportunity to bring together all stakeholders to discuss opportunities, collaborate and prepare a joint action plan for achieving the target for its biotech sector of US $100 billion by 2020. The inaugural function began with the ceremonial lighting of the lamp, followed by a welcome address by the Secretary of the Department of Biotechnology, Professor K. Vijay Raghavan. <laughs> Look at the map of tuberculosis in the world, or malaria, or filariasis, or poverty, or female feticide, or education. And in all these parameters, India falls very, very short. So they ask us, how is it that you have such great aspirations? How are you going to deal with such realities at the same time? Is it not an impossible task? And that task, certainly, the Department of Biotechnology has shown that these difficult tasks are not impossible ones, but more fundamentally, our country has shown that these kinds of tasks are not impossible tasks. We must not forget that at 1947, when India became independent, what we had left by the British is really pretty much the railways and universities which allowed us to speak language which was then alien to us. But our literacy at that time was a few percent, about six or seven percent. Our lifespan was very low, you know, late thirties. Disease was rampant. Children died at birth. And that changed dramatically over many, many years of independence step by step. How did that happen? How did the polio vaccine program eliminate this disease from our country? How are the other vaccination programs? How is it that, you know, Far fewer children die at childbirth than they used to. How is our literacy so much higher? How is our lifespan in the high 60s now? And could potentially 75 years after independence become uh, 75? These came about not by merely stating the problem constantly, but by actually grasping specific solutions and implementing. It is amazing what has happened over the years. You know, there are many major areas we attend to, human resource development, promotion of excellence and innovation, biotechnology facilities, bioinformatics, basic and translational R&D, and we have taken on many grand challenge programs to solve many major problems. Biotechnology for societal development is a major area. International collaborations and our aided institutions are one component of our institutional support. It goes far beyond those, and we also have now clusters of institutions and incubators coming, and industry and manufacturing partnerships in a big way. In agribiotech, India took a major thrust in our biotech push into the country, but we also collaborated in the Rice Genome Project. The focus of the summit is on the priority themes, Make in India, Nurturing Bio-Entrepreneurship, Skill India, Biotech Opportunities, An Action for Swachh Bharat and Swasth Bharat, Biotechnology Cooperation, Biotechnology Innovation for Inclusive Development, and Biotechnology and Society. The Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, Shri Radha Mohan Singh, in his special address said, New technology has made contingency plan and made the jilons of the country. The country has made the 500 jilons of the country. New technology and vigyan will be the most important thing. The land is growing, and the land is growing. The land will grow, so the new land will grow, and the new land will grow. The end is the end of this, that our land is growing. And this is going to be done. There is no doubt about it. اس میں کہیں سے کوئی کسی کی اصحمتی نہیں ہو سکتی ہے اور اسی لیے یہ جو جینیٹک انجینئرنگ جو ہے یہ جو سنسادن ہے جو انیک فنسلوں کے لیے ادھیک اتپادن کا مارک پرسست کرتا ہے لیکن دھیان اس بات کا رہے 
कि ये जो विभिन्न जैव और पर्यावरणीय सुरक्षा उपाय हैं उसके साथ संचालित किया जाए अधिक उत्पादन हो ये जरूरी है लेकिन पर्यावरण के दृष्टि से सुरक्षा के दृष्टि से विचार करते हुए इसका संचालित किया जाए और अनुसंधान का काम जारी रहे मानव जीवन के सुरक्षा को ध्यान में रखते हुए पर्यावरण मंत्रालय द्वारा गठित जो कमेटी है उसके मानदंडों पर जो जीवन के सुरक्षा से संबंधित है उसको ध्यान में रखते हुए आज देश की आवश्यकता है उत्पादन बढ़ाना और इस दृष्टि से हमारे वैज्ञानिकों के जो परिश्रम हो रहे हैं कुछ तो परिश्रम हुए हैं उसके परिणाम हमें प्राप्त हो रहे हैं और मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि आप सबके प्रयत्न से परिश्रम से इस मंत्रालय के माध्यम से कृषि के क्षेत्र में खद्दान के क्षेत्र में जो भविष्य में संकट आने वाला है आपके परिश्रम और ज्ञान के सहारे निश्चित रूप से हम उन चुनौतियों का न सिर्फ सामना करेंगे बल्कि उस पर विजय भी प्राप्त करेंगे ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी एंड अर्थ साइंस श्री वाई एस चौधरी इन स्पीच रिमार्क इट्स टाइम फॉर एस टू रिमेम्बर और फाउंडिंग फादर्स हुट ऑफ बायो टेक्नोलॉजी इज गोइंग टू बी एन इम्पॉर्टेंट line of activity particularly a country like our india if we see last 25 years the it information technology have really grown that's almost like at a saturation position after it bt revolution is going to come up that is how in the hyderabad the genome valley was founded which is actually contributed a lot for this country and after 25 years of it revolution i am 100% sure that the next decade no need to wait for another 25 years next decade is going to be the bt revolution so there is a need for our country to think of converging or creating an ecosystem from academics research industry investors and lenders that is how we can make biotechnology to have quick success there is a need for us to make a joint effort having said that joint effort it is not like only state governments can do only central governments can do there's a need for us to think of uh, involving central government state government foreign collaborations ngos industry csr all put together if we do a proper matching contribution can take place as far as the financial resources are concerned and translation technology whatever uh, research we do that also can be easily tried through clinical trials there is no doubt the biotechnology is definitely is a time dependent thing it is not something that writing a software for example as rotavirus rotavirus took about 14 years to finally to bring it to the market so anything we can aim for but it is definitely a time dependent thing there is a need for us to do as many as possible research activities so the pyramid structure of growth or development should not be done we have to get on to the networking management we should uh, open up in many areas including rural india we have very good colleges very good universities we also should make sure that all our particularly from my ministry many institutions of ccmb or chemical biology or basic chemical technology all these institutions also has to come on to the one platform to exchange the views and see that uh, the information and knowledge is properly utilized honorable minister of state independent charge ministry of commerce and industry shrimati nirmala sitaraman in her address focused on the honorable prime minister's call for make in india and startup ecosystem in biotechnology which has a potential for a scale up aiming at reaching 100 billion by 2025 is not unrealistic at all and i would think this department would be able to happily achieve it given the massive backbone that you have in terms of the scientists and the experts who have been with you from the beginning and who continue to be with you us fda approved institutions which are working in biotechnology india has the second largest number after the usa that's not an easy target to achieve and if you have the second largest if all of us have the second largest after the us of institutions which are us fda approved it just shows what is the kind of expertise and uh, perfection with which we are in this field and when uh, prime minister starting the startup launching the startup uh, program on january 16th we hope to have about 1000 to 1500 startups in another few years 
who will be focusing on biotechnology. There's always this suspicion that the startups that we've launched, the Prime Minister gave a lot of focus for it, is very application-based and it is technology-based. It's just going to be looking at you know, retailing and doing many other things, the end-user side of things, and it probably overemphasizes on application and uh, technology-driven areas. But no, we are very clearly emphasizing on biotechnology, core sciences also to be a part of the startup revolution we plan for this country and towards that end through the department of pharmaceuticals it is expected a thousand crore venture capital fund will be launched in order to help startups which will focus in this particular area and that might help smaller groups which can come into looking at biotechnology because not to point a finger but i like to highlight the sort of disproportionate ratio. Out of the 10 top biotechnology institutions, seven are focusing on biopharmaceuticals and about only three are looking at agribiotech. We'd like more of them to be also coming up in agribiotech because that has an implication on food security of the country. Industry itself can be creating a common facility for innovation in both pharmaceutical and also in agri-tech. It will be of great help. The government can also do a lot of hand-holding on that. When we are setting up pharmaceutical hubs, when we are setting up biotechnology hubs, we are making it a point to underline, particularly for the pharmaceutical side of things, the pharmaceutical sector in India is just not contributing to India. It's just not contributing in terms of improving our balance of payment situation. It is not just improving our earnings in dollars. But today, you have made a mark of producing generic drugs at affordable prices for the entire globe. Africa depends on us. In fact, developed economies depend on us. After the release of Biotechnology Department's publication, Biotechnology Social Development Awards 2015 were presented to scientists and advisors working in this field. This special volume marks DBT's 30 years, features commentaries from leading names in biological sciences in India across the world. DBT, which has been playing a catalyst in all the areas of research successfully, now has an enviable 30-year benefit of hindsight. To recognize the efforts of dedicated organizations, scientists and social sector organizations, the DBT initiated the Biotechnology Social Development Awards last year. The first award, Shramjeevi Janta Sahayak Mandal from Satara District, Maharashtra, Shru Shri Bala Saheb Kolkar, Honorable Minister of Science and Technology and Earth Sciences and the Chief Guest of this function, Dr. Harsha Vardhan, in his inaugural address. When you keep a target of something 10 years from now, so for many in the various departments, whether they are scientists or young fellows or very experienced people, targets should be ambitious and targets should also be no doubt achievable, but uh, there should be a real sense of urgency also in achieving those targets. Our Department of Biotechnology can certainly be rated as uh, one of the best within the Department of Science and Technology and whatever we are doing and whatever we have achieved is certainly world class. We have almost uh, state of the art equipments, activities, manpower, resource, everything everywhere. Occasions like this, calling it a global biotechnology summit, we have people from all over the world and the best people of the whole sector. We use this occasion to get into the meticulous diagnosis of the still unresolved issues and problems of mankind which biotechnology can solve. We reiterate our commitment to give people their solutions to those problems as early as possible. We introduce a sense of urgency, set deadlines, set goals, set timeliness, introduce mechanisms for introspection, introduce mechanisms for accountability and start a process of self-auditing also. Former Secretary, Department of Biotechnology, Dr. M. K. Bhan commented on the biotechnology sector in the 21st century. To understand the complexity of this planet, 
and this largeness and we have here the cities the roads disasters the opportunities the health needs the agriculture need there is a complexity to today's world now a lot of global complexity which means that science and technology must become a very important instrument of interpreting how we should think about what we are going through this is both knowledge and innovation and products everything cyber security is not only an issue of technology internet is not only an issue of technology it's also about our lives our privacy how young people are growing in this age we tend to make it as simple as we can but it's actually very complex and i think it's important that we ask the question how does indian science communicate with indian society to create this understanding of why it is important to them and i think this i see as a big challenge i wish i find it now priceless to for the science community to have people who are great communicators not of we've done this we've done that of under explaining the power of scientific approach to dealing with human life you know nobel laureate from wiseman institute of science israel professor ada ijonath explained the importance of ribosomes Commonly biotechnology is performed in either cell free systems or bacterial cells or eukaryotic tissues always by ribosomes this is actually your way factory we like to describe the situation in cells the genetic code is in the dna it's not available here so it's being transcribed to messenger rna rna and dna are very similar molecules each of them has four letters and each triple triplet of these four letters is coding for an amino amino acid that will come to a growing will be connected to a growing protein by the ribosome that's the story for all cells ribosomes are universal they work more or less the same way in all cells work means decode and make the peptide bond the bond between the amino acids there is a huge number of ribosomes that function in each living cell a mammalian cells in the liver they can contain 5 million ribosomes working constantly even bacteria can reach 100000 in the growth period they work very fast they can make type peptide bonds 5 to 40 in 1 second that's probably why we are using them for many other reasons many other applications professor maria leptin embo excellence in life sciences heidelberg germany let's try and think about why we think that risk is something good i assume it's because it is recognized that we're hoping for something new and unexpected when we do research so risk is implicit in doing something where we don't know the outcome and we assume that the outcome will be something good so that's why we why we have this connection between high risk and high gain that's obviously what everybody wants so what's wrong with that well nothing is wrong with that except the why not is actually equally obvious it's called risk because the high gain is not what happens every time some of the time or in fact most of the time depending on how high the risk was the result is failure so we somehow don't want that we just want the high risk high gain and forget that if we want to see risky projects we also have to be prepared to see failure and for research funding organizations what that means if you want high risk you must be prepared to fund failure very counterintuitive but it directly follows from what i've said and failure is seen very differently in different countries the global biotechnology summit 2016 will help to align the goals of the biotech strategy with the policies of state governments and prepare a joint action plan it will also help to create exciting opportunities for students and researchers by giving them an exposure to the best experts in the field this program was produced by dilip chhatra